Now not only do we use sprinklers, but there's some other things that are used. Uh, used to be they call, here I notice field stack heaters, people call them smudge pots. Uh, people used to literally burn number two diesel oil or stove oil in the, the smudge pots and boy they'd make a heck of a pollution mess. And in most areas those are no longer legal in the United States because of the pollution they create. But they literally were burning fossil fuel and trying to heat the, their orchard area. They'd place them all around the orchard and when it got so cold they'd go light them all and they'd start burning fires out throughout the orchard and it generated heat and it would warm the atmosphere and keep the temperature above the critical point. Well they converted now and they use natural gas and you'll see a lot of field stack heaters now run on natural gas which doesn't pollute the atmosphere like the diesel did or the stove oil, call it whichever you'd like. But it's very expensive. It's very expensive. And uh, areas that have real frost problems sometimes just get to the point where they cannot effectively grow orchard because it just costs too much to do the frost protection. There's other areas of the country that are very fortunate. We're in one of those fortunate areas. They seldom have to do much frost protection here in the Walla Walla Valley. We're really lucky as far as our climate conditions. And seldom do we get much of a frost or a freeze out of fruit. Another thing that we can use are wind machines. And wind machines are stacked out through the orchards as you drive out through toward Milton Freewater. You'll see those big poles out there with a propeller on top of them. Just sitting out in the field. Well, they only get used a few nights a year. And here's a case where as the orchard starts to cool off, that hot air rises out of the orchard, they turn on those wind machines to mix the warmer air that's up higher in the atmosphere, you know, up there 10, 20, 30 feet, it's warmer than it is right down on the surface. Because cold air settles to the ground, the hot air rises. Cold air is heavier than hot air. So they turn on those wind machines and they blend the cold and the hot air together they literally are driving the hot air down into that cold air and so they're not allowing it to settle and separate. They're blending it up. And those things are spinning and turning around in, in circles as they spin, so they're mixing the air in all directions. And they're pretty expensive to set up, but once they're there, they're good for years and years and years. And it's all they do is use a little uh, energy, whether it's electric motor or a, or an internal combustion engine run to drive the propeller, it, as far as operations are concerned, once it's installed, it's really inexpensive to operate. And there's no real side effects from it. You don't have residual smoke and smudge like you do from the, the uh, field stacks, heaters, and you don't have a whole bunch of water freezing on the ground like you do with irrigation. It's you know, you're left with the field looking just like it started the day before <coughs> when you use wind machines. And so they're very, very popular. And in most areas in the state of Washington, that's oftentimes enough frost protection to take care of the problem. Well, then we come to sprinklers. Another way to do it is to put water on the ground so we can get it freezing and releasing heat. Okay, we can release heat by burning fossil fuels, we can blend air temperatures, or we can release heat by freezing water. And that's the third method and that's the one we get involved in in irrigation, is designing systems to work as frost protection. And there's two ways we can do it. We can do it under tree, keep the water down below the canopy, or do it over tree and freeze everything up. Now you can see in Overtree that you can start to develop a bit of a problem. As the night goes on and you're watering, you're starting to build an ice load on the limbs of the tree. And as you build that ice load, those limbs start sagging. And eventually some of them are going to break. So you can do some damage to your orchard 
just by developing that big ice load on the limbs of the trees themselves. So that's one consideration when you're looking at over tree frost protection that you must be concerned about, you know, is the strength of the crop that you are watering and what the damage potential is when you're irrigating.